you guys are ready, this will be take one. Okay, cameras rolling. You can talk about animation, you can talk about the techniques, you can talk about color and sound and music. All the audience cares about is the character on the screen. He fits in with the pantheon of great characters. Bugs Bunny, Tom and Jerry, Popeye the Sailor. Yes, who? Yes, who? Woody Woodpecker. There's something about him that's very lovable. It's hard to put your finger on what really made him so, so famous. I think it's several factors why he's so popular. He's a little bird, character living in a tree. He gets picked on, he gets even with them. He's this unstable character, and we can all kind of relate to that. Ah, so I've got some screws, Lou. He looks friendly, and yet he's not. Q-clip. I'm a necessary evil. He was kind of a wise guy, and people enjoy that kind of thing. You missed me. I love trickster characters because what they do is they get away with things that adults and kids all wish they could in the confines of society. Excuse me. <laughs> Hope you got that burp on camera. No, please do not use that burp. Oh, please, can we just fast forward to the new cartoons? This is the internet, man. I was, I was back in the Living day. Living the dream. Living baby. the dream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, let's do a few of those. Hello, Randy. Take one ten. My name is Alex Zam. I am the director and writer of the Woody Woodpecker feature and of these ten shorts. Ow! Guess who? <laughs> as soon as the script is finished, we do a voice record. And that's where we bring our hero actors into the recording booth. You don't learn how to be a woodsman from a book. You live it. That's funny. That third one's pretty good, too. I worked with Alex on uh, the feature film, and we had a blast on that. Twigs, spark, campfire. Woody! Mm-hmm. These guys are at such a level, it's like jazz musicians riffing upon riffs upon riffs. This is Wendy Walrus. You can try Swedish, we can also try a little Margaret Dumont. Oh, Wally, you're so soft and doughy. Let's try three in a row. Guess who? Guess who? Wally! Wally! <sighs> Don't want to tamper too much with such a classic, well-known character like Woody because everyone kind of has a, their own memory of him. But for me as a voiceover artist, it's so much fun to play another iconic character like Woody. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. Yeah, you better believe it. Take that, Bugs. I think anytime you take a legacy character, you have to be true to the fans of the character and you have to introduce them to a modern sensibility. At some point in the afterlife, if I run into Walter Lance, I want him to shake my hand and not, not punch me. Whenever I get makeup, I always think, I wish I was going somewhere after this. If my voice level gets too low or too high, yeah. you know, let me know and I can adjust it. Let me just look at my note. I, the one thing I wrote. Oh, yeah. Here we are, we're talking about Woody Woodpecker and uh, Walter Lance. Walter Lance was a New Yorker who really had most of his formidable development as a character animator at the Bray Studio, but he had his dreams and ambitions to come to Los Angeles. Walter Lance, I think, wanted to expand his horizons. He was now a man with at least a small reputation, having made short subjects, his name was on movie posters. He wasn't a nobody. Fell in with a fantastic crowd that included Carl Lemley, Frank Capra, and he'd be invited to their poker games. Maybe he'd be the guy getting sandwiches, but he'd be there. <laughs> he got this opportunity working for Universal to produce and direct these Oswald the Rabbit cartoons. Mr. Lemley sort of noticed that this fellow at our poker games is a successful New York cartoon producer. He asked him if he would take over the studio and it wouldn't be an independent studio. It would be 
Universal's own studio. Walter Lance, the creator, begins the picture work with a sketch of Oswald Rabbit and the other characters of the film right here in his casting department. You know, it's sort of a natural assumption that all animated cartoons are made by the Disney organization. Well, of course they weren't. Now, this is the scene where Oswald's team is losing. The score is 75 to nothing. Universal was the first of the big studios to have a cartoon department. The huge stack of celluloids is to be photographed one at a time by an intricate and cunning camera. The staff that worked with him really like loved this idea of just getting one character to hit. The final job is in the recording room with the grand ensemble. The picture is run with the music, sound effects, and dialogue all played and recorded on the soundtrack. It's really important to have a major star. Paramount had Betty Boop and Popeye. Disney had Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck. You really needed that for audience identification, the audience likability. When he became an independent producer in 1940, exactly three cartoons in was Knock Knock, and that's, of course, the cartoon that introduces Woody Woodpecker. We never know when a new character will come along and be a big success. They didn't know Woody Woodpecker was gonna be a star character. Woody basically shows up in the middle of an Andy Panda cartoon. Daddy, can you really catch a bird by putting salt on his tail? Well, don't bother me, Andy. Andy Panda and Papa Panda were going to have roof troubles, with the troubles being caused by a rainstorm. Walter took one look at the storyboard and he said, that's too expensive. Think of something else that's going to get in their way when they're trying to fix their roof. Guess who? How about a crazy woodpecker? <laughs> He was supposed to be a, a one-shot cameo appearance. They could see that Woody was getting a bigger reaction than Andy Panda was. People really thought there was something to him. They, they loved his brash character. They loved his personality. In those days, we previewed the cartoons before they were released to the theaters, and they all went for the Woody Woodpecker character, and we had a star overnight. We didn't start out to make a famous character. It just happened. It just caught on. Maybe I am crazy. Maybe I'd better see a psychiatrist. Psychi 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 I'll go see a doctor. That's the same year, 1940, that Bugs Bunny emerges. The same year that Tom and Jerry emerge. Lance really caught the right character at the right moment. Once he had Woody Woodpecker, then he had something that really made money for Universal Studios. My money! <laughs> really, the character just got bigger and bigger. You calling me fat? Can you do the Woody Woodpecker laugh? Yes. Yeah, okay, you wanted me to give it a shot? Give it a shot. Oh, it's gonna show up in the dark! It was Mel Blanc who voiced Woody in the first cartoon, and that laugh was one he came up with when he was in high school. <laughs> it's weird, you kind of have to like push down and then ramp up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's near as funny as the woodpecker. Do you think so, Mr. Huh? Do you, Mr. Huh? I like cartoons. Don't you like cartoons? The end laugh, though, is like the machine gun laugh. The <laughs> <laughs> In the very beginning, he's not a very attractive character. He's kind of ugly. He had these really fat feet. He had teeth. Everybody thinks I'm crazy. <laughs> yes, sir. That's me. That's me. They modified his design right away, and they kept tweaking it. Woody, I think, is vastly different from where he started to where he is now. In the 40s, he was kind of a crazy hick. Ah, go lay an egg! In the middle period, his body weight changes. <whistles> and by the 50s, he has a pompadour. So he's gone through so many incarnations, and each one has a slightly different personality. Who are you expecting? Miss Universe? One of the biggest challenges of translating Woody is which period do you choose? Like many cartoon characters, they've gone through so many iterations over the years. We're remaking Woody, and we want to keep it classic, but also bring it into the modern. Yes, Every studio have the same idea that the character is a personality. <laughs> so in order to create that personality, you have to kind of get into who the personality is, right? Pretty much start off with doing the research. All of the different design passes that I've done in the past, just trying to find out what makes everyone really excited about the new version of the characters. 
our job when we were doing these cartoons was really to amalgamate the best aspects of all of him, to bring his anarchic sensibility, but to give him more of a, a witty, wisecracking verbal comedy. Time for a plot twist. <laughs> as well as completely uh, physically anarchic comedy, too. That woodpecker's crazy as a moon. You said it. Woody was a bona fide star celebrity character. Ooh la la. He was his own unique personality. And I'll bet he ain't kidding, either. This be hombre magnifico. One of those staples of movie going for decades. <laughs> about home. He got a star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. He walks around Universal Studios. Woody is just a star. And you did the Oscar, right? Oh, no. <laughs> Walter was nominated for an Oscar nine times, and then he won the Lifetime Achievement Award in 1979, handed to him by Robin Williams. Where's Al? Anyone seen Al? Get Alex over here and let's wrap this up. Hi, looking for this? Ow! Is there anything else I'd like to say about Woody? Well, it's about time they're making some new ones. Got really excited when it became a potential that we could do two episodes in Brazil. Hello, Rio! Not only is Woody been such a special icon in Brazil, he gets to be part of the Brazilian culture by visiting there in these two episodes. Welcome aboard the SS Woody. Everybody thinks I'm crazy. Okay, Woodpecker, get ready to star in my latest cartoon. I think Walter would be very happy to know people are still enjoying the character. With a little quiet time. <laughs> Woody's sharp color palette and his bold character continues to keep inspiring people. When you first take on a legacy character, you're out in a limb. <laughs> but I gotta say, it's really an honor. There's nothing better than uh, making people laugh. How long do you think that Woody is going to last? I really believe he will last forever. <laughs> oh, that's the Woody Woodpecker song. <laughs> yeah, he's a peck at it all day long. He pecks a few holes in a tree to see if a redwood's really red. And it's nothing to him on the tiniest whim to peck a few holes in your head. <laughs> oh, that's the Woody Woodpeckers, too. <laughs> the Woody Woodpeckers song.